Hello guys, what is up? Welcome back to another episode by the Pokemonster. And it is currently a little late in the evening, but there was a fella that was perhaps interested in every reverse holo from Pokemon Go. So what I am doing now is I took my desk light here and I haven't condition checked the cards yet. So I'm taking everything out of the sleeve. I have a stack of reverse hollows here, all different ones. Take them out of the sleeve, check for print lines, check the back if it's near mint or maybe excellent. And then we send the list to him. What we have, we have two pals, this is excellent. I can show you a couple of examples. And this is all already near mint. So, I charge about 31 cents for reversed hollows. Uh, it doesn't matter which set in near mint condition. If they are excellent condition, and I'm pretty strict on my grading, this one has a couple of print lines, so I leave it in the old sleeve. We can take a quick check at the back. So there is a lot of dust here. It's not all damage, it's all the it sometimes uh, it looks like whitening, but it's really dust. But since this one is reverse, we leave it in the old sleeve. I mean, of course, since it's excellent. And when it's excellent, I charge about 21 cents. Obviously, it all depends on the Pokemon as well. Not only the quality of the card, you see, scratch. Maybe he only wants the near mint ones. Maybe he wants also the excellent ones a bit cheaper. And it's also for administration, right? If he doesn't want to buy anything. I'm now basically busy for him, working for him, but I had to do this anyways. But I could have chosen another time, another moment. And now I am bound to this moment since I want to help him as quick as possible to close up the deal, you know, basically. So these are all cards that I got from a friend. I have two friends that now gave me cards for them to sell, basically. I have a microfiber towel here. When I can't see something clear on the back, I have add one drop, one tiny drop of water on this particular part. So we do like this. It's only a little moisty, it's not really wet. And then, if I can't know for sure if something is, uh, if something is whitening or dust, this is all whitening, but there was some dust on there as well. We just wiped it off. Unfortunately, Soul Rock also excellent. Um, yeah, where was I? So I want to get rid of that, uh, all the cards that I got from my uh, buddies to sell for them. I'm listing them, I'm, I'm basically sorting them, condition checking them, listing them and selling them. This one is a nice near mint in my opinion, no scratches. Not even print lines. The back, yeah, we see some whitening in multiple corners. Is this whitening? Yeah, unfortunately, is this whitening? If one of the corners is not whitening, you can argue it's near mint, but unfortunately, I already grabbed a new sleeve. This is excellent. I'm really strict on my grading. It, so far, so far it brought me prosperity, or however you want to call it big print line in the attack there in the ability rather and um, Snorlax is a bit more expensive compared to regular Pokemon Go bulk due to uh, the block players cannot retreat it's still an F block card it is still in rotation it was in one point in the stall deck with Erica's invitation and such, it was really a nice card. So maybe even in excellent, I will ch still charge 31 cents for it. So 
So we take the wet part or the moisty part and then we take the dry part and very carefully we go over the the foil surface where I saw some dust. And a gorgeous card. How was the back? I shouldn't do that, all that effort, if I don't check the back first. So this is all a learning process for me as well. I've now listed 10,000 cards maybe. And it's uh, you if you get the the better the hand of it, or if you really start to know what you're doing, and it, and it gets a bit more automatic, then uh, that's really nice. See print line. So print line is unfortunately excellent. I just heard that was the reason why I decided to record this for now. That uh, Mason, Mason Barry from CNA Gaming, Cardinal Gaming, now started relisting uh, his Pokemon inventory as well, due to something with TCG Direct not uh, agreeing with the with the condition, the grade they gave them the cards, so they had to relist them and recondition check them all, and uh, yeah for. Exactly what I talked about earlier in a, in two discords and there are always people yelling off the top of their lungs That I'm just I don't know what I'm talking about, but I saw this already coming I said to them already that stores in Germany start doing this as well and now you see it on YouTube too Cardinal gaming the volume of sales is so much lowered for them due to all the cards now being LP instead of near mint but near mint cards virtually are they, they, they are, do exist but they are really tough to get so cards from the pack have such a high chance to not be near mint if you have a spot of whitening here that is relatively large and a point of whitening there and in this corner also one to two points of whitening I don't see any print lines the centering is decent I just put it up for excellent, for me it doesn't really matter if you have 70,000 cards listed. It takes a lot of time and effort to recheck everything, but it even takes more time to and money to go back and forward. I talked to about that uh, in the past as well. You have to go back and forward with customers on 30 cents cards and in the end they win the discussion and you even have to pay the card. So that their order was basically for free. Look how much money you save yourself by just putting the cards in LP, uh, which is the equivalent of equivalent of excellent in Europe. This one is near mint. Let me know in the comments if I missed a scratch and timestamp it for me, please. We'll see. Because you're gonna have customers that are like me, like myself, and check every card they get, even if it is a 30 cent card, like this. And they will find every scratch. And if you have service damage, the grade will automatically be out, in my opinion, LP in America, which is yet again excellent in um, Europe. And you see the widening in the corner. Here a little uh, whitening along the edge. The, the card quality, the card stock quality is just not that good. But I don't see any scratches guys. So I think we're safe putting this one in near mint still. I checked for a bit if it was the ditto. You have a very nice ditto gimmick. Gosh darn, it's so hot in here and my throat hurts a little. And it's late, so I want to go to bed soon after. We see a print line in the bottom of the card, just above the artist's name. So, But it doesn't really matter. I'm glad that 
was able to talk to you about this. It was just on my mind for a little bit. So I'm going off to bed after the next couple of cards, only four or five cards. And then I will edit it a bit and then I will schedule it for later for you guys right now. Um, what does the back look like? Not near mint, unfortunately, it's just just a shame, all the cards not near mint, especially reverse foils. If you have a regular card that looks decent and then the back has one or two spots widening, that's different than when you have also print lines included. That's not, you don't want to see that on near mint cards. If you watch my meal days that I created over the past year and a half or so, you see how strict I am and how much I um, am frustrated by cards that are not near mint. So also when I start selling them, they should be near mint as well. I got all these cards as near mint, but when you take a look at them like this, it, uh, it is totally different than when you're just sitting in the daylight, handling the cards, looking at them for five seconds. And I think this should be done with all the cards so it's not profitable to do this and what is nice to uh, avoid risk and to reduce risk of listing the card in the wrong condition is list as many possible in LP that was the main point of why I wanted to talk to you guys and I see it happening now so I'm glad I was right I saw this trend coming people um, price the nines now for near mint and the sevens are near mint technically by by PSA standards but no one wants the sevens a good eight and nine is near mint everything that you can buy near mint raw it has a chance for a ten that is what everybody is looking for what is uh, perfectly understandable I don't like sevens myself either I'm just an 8 guy, 9 guy, uh, and I like to see between my near mint cards if there are potential 10 candidates with certain cards, obviously not every card, this card is not worth grading. Uh, the centering is also a bit off, but in general this card is not worth grading. But I like to do that, go through my binders, oh is there still something in there that is 10 potential? So this one is just a bit more expensive since this one is still played a lot in the TCG by for example Lost Buck decks. I haven't been playing the TCG myself now for a long time so I don't know what is hip and trendy but I think this card is still a bit more expensive. So yeah it was not near mint so we have a bunch of excellent cards here. We have a good portion of near mint cards here, which is theoretically near mint mint. But that's the trend, the shift that is happening in the market. And I'm fine with it. And you have to deal with it and adapt. And that's what you see happening now. Because I also purchased some old cards near mint, which were terribly scratched up. I don't understand how that is possible, but some of the accounts were really old as well. So when they were younger, they didn't pay attention to it. And with the price rise, they adjusted the price as well, but they didn't check the condition over and over again. So when the card was 20 cents and it was not near mint and they listed in a, in near mint condition, it's no problem. But if you adjust the price to $1, $2, $3, and you never check the condition again and it still is not listed in the right condition yet yeah, at one point you will get trouble people think it's too high of a price to just let it go under the radar and perhaps I said already earlier I don't know if that video is already released but I saw a podcast with Nick Old School Pokemon really great eBay seller and he says reputation is everything 
And that specific conversation was about scamming, but also listing cards in the right condition. It gives you a good, uh, yeah, fair share of, of good marketing and building your reputation. And your whole store stands by your reputation. If you have a good reputation, people will come to you. If you have a bad reputation, people don't want to buy from you. In general, right? So thanks. Uh, Thanks everybody for watching, see you all on the next one. Hello guys, back with another order. Someone ordered a couple of reversed hollows from Pokemon Go. A really decent sized order, between 31 and 21 cents a piece. I had to put two cards in one sleeve for a couple due to the maximum weight of an order. And then we have Melmetal Full Art and Alolan Executor Full Art.